All right, tomorrow is the Euro elections. I don't want to talk about them too much. I've already said what I have to say about them. Well, obviously, I'm going to mention them a bit more. Less than 50% of people will be turning out to actually uh, vote in them, with UKIP coming first or a close second. Um, we, we won't get the results for the Euro elections until Sunday anyway, so we'll all be waiting with uh, bated breath for that one, won't we? <sighs> yeah, isn't it funny how all the leaders of the main parties all look like they're entirely constructed out of plastic? Particularly Miliband and particularly Cameron, they've got really plastic faces. The other two guys look like, uh, yeah, they have a sort of plastic thing, but they're more like spitting image puppets of themselves as well. Anyway, let's get back to these uh, Muslim patrols and other patrols that have been taking place in the Whitechapel area recently. Now, in the last podcast, I talked about Muslim converts, that is to say people from a background similar to ethnic background, similar to my own, becoming Muslims and uh, the way that they dress, their body language and so forth. You may have noticed there was a few hesitations in the last one. That's because I mislaid a whole load of my notes or buzzwords. Um, what I wanted to say more about these converts was as, indi as individuals, individual human beings, that they do have a very authoritarian personality. Now, when I say an authoritarian personality, an authoritarian personality is not only the desire to tell people what to do and how to think, but also to be submissive yourself. It's not only the desire to be dominate, but it's also the desire to be dominated. And in the case of the Muslim converts, it's to have... Um, that they uh, are told what to think, how to think, that every aspect of their personality is dominated by this ideology. They're in a state of submission, and they gladly and happily and smilingly admit it. And what to do in every sphere of their life, from their dress to their sexual behaviour, that is if they have any sex lives. I don't think that um, these Muslim authoritarians want to take the country over and administer Sharia law because that's just a wild, wet dream for them. But what they want is their ideology to become dominant. And that's what's very interesting about them, and they really do believe it will become dominant. Anyway, God, I'm having trouble fucking around with these notes again. I'll say a few things about the Muslim patrols. There haven't been any recently, and they all consist of people that come from outside the borough. And many of them are converts, obviously, but who else but a convert would want to make such an arsehole of themselves in public? There have been clashes with the local Muslim population, particularly shopkeepers and anybody else that takes umbrage to them, which is just about everybody around here. And there have been even uh, punch-ups and clashes in uh, Brick Lane, and particularly in Fieldgate Street, an area that I'm very familiar with. And it's also involved people that I know, uh, young females, particularly uh, those from a particular ethnic background. And these converts have taken great umbrage at the way that they've been dressed and the fact that they've been shockingly drinking in public. But there's been another kind of patrol recently as well. From the other side, so-called Christian patrols. They've been uh, mounted by uh, right-wing or neo-Nazi, nationalist, whatever you want to call them, group called Britain First, one of the new kids on the block with the disintegration of the uh, British National Party. On their first incursion into the area, they drove an armoured vehicle, would you believe, down Brick Lane and uh, ended up haranguing the uh, touts hanging outside the restaurants in the middle of the night, when most of the local Muslims were uh, 
either safely tucked up in bed or uh, off on their uh, business elsewhere. The whole area had been swamped out with tourists at that time of night. They ended up haranguing the touts and trying to uh, give them Bibles and so on. Really weird. And then we also had on Monday an incursion into the East London Mosque uh, in the Fieldgate Street. Bit, I think it was. Uh, but they went in and they'd already done it in Bradford, tried to speak to the imam while trying to hand out Bibles, which is quite ironic because like, even though they call themselves Christians, we know, and they very well know as well, that their religion, if they have any, it looks more back to the days of the Norwegian fjords for Woden and uh, all those other Norse gods. That's more what they're into. Um, and have they actually read the Bible? I doubt it very much. Well, why should they? What a lot of old nonsense it is. If you think the Koran's a load of boring nonsense, then try the Bible. It's ten times the size and just as boring and irrelevant load of crap. So here we've got two loads of nutters touting their religious books on the streets. So what about the uh, BMP, you know, bullshitters, nonsenses? Ponce's party as they are known around here uh, well they're in complete disintegration anyway uh, I did see their political broadcast the one that was banned and the Britain first election broadcast highly bizarre particularly the BMP one again a load of crap just the same as all political broadcasts are but interesting nevertheless very interesting very well done, very professionally made. And the one thing that emerged from both of them, they haven't got any policies at all. They just want to create fear. So that's what they live on, fear. Are um, Britain first? Are they, are they uh, Nazis, National Socialists? Are they fundamentalist Christians? Are they a combination of both? Are they radical nationalists? Well, it really doesn't matter. I mean, we know what they are and they know what they are. And uh, that's all really what counts, isn't it? If you don't know what they are, if you can't figure out what they are, then you must be pretty thick. You know, you should maybe go back to Eton or wherever it is they produce all these thickies. I looked at the Britain First tweets as well, where members of the public um, were adding to their uh, political ideology, you know, what... What should we do? Where where should we go? What are your ideas that Britain First can do? And it's the same old crap. Hanging, birching, denying benefits to people they don't like, anti-immigration stuff, anti-EU stuff, nationalist stuff. There just seemed to be some sort of division there. Some wanted to exile people they didn't like to the South Shetlands. Others wanted to... Uh, exile them to South Georgia. These places are in the South Atlantic and it kind of, um, it's a bit like the uh, right wing shock jock that wanted to put people he didn't like, social security claimants and so on, on the uh, South Sandwich Islands, which all sound very nice, but they're in fact in the sub-Antarctic islands and the last remaining possessions of the British Empire, just a load of rock, ice, snow, penguins, and guano. So basically, BMP and uh, other groups, they're just like bottom feeders, Britain first. But the real Eurosceptic right wing crap vote is being hoovered up by the UKIP. And it's funny about UKIP, isn't it? They've actually would in actually encouraging people to come out and vote. People that previously wouldn't vote are going to register their protest by coming out and voting for UKIP. But it still means that the turnout will be less than 50%. And uh, they've created a lot of the Eurosceptic vote and brought out these extra voters, as I've said. Um, British National Party and Britain First are only saying what UKIP will be saying next year. And uh, what the Tories and Labour, using different language, of course, not wanting to be called racist, will be using uh, in the maybe uh, before the next election, which illustrates this further drift to the right that we have in this country. Um, and if you think Labour's not right wing, well, it is just as right wing as the Conservatives. 
Remember the war in Afghanistan, remember the war in Iraq, remember all the detention centers that were built for uh, illegal immigrants and refugees and so forth, the discrimination against travelers. It was going on just as much, and they, they created the superstructure and the infrastructure for the conservatives to carry on with. So anyway, these patrols, whether they're Muslim or Christian, they're both symbiotic. They feed off each other. They have no real, Im real impact. There are not loads of people coming to uh, join them from this area. They're only there to set us against each other so that they can reap the political benefits that come from us divided and fighting each other. In the ensuing chaos, they will come to power, or so they think. Just have a look at the uh, Sharia law thing. Even the conservative right-wing uh, people that use the East London mosques, they don't want these nutters in there. They don't want, they're not campaigning for Sharia law on the streets and so on. So nobody wants them from the Muslim community and nobody from the uh, remaining uh, East End white working class community wants these uh, Britain First or the British National Party around. They had support in the 70s, the 80s and the 90s, but it's all gone. Demographic changes and people changing their minds and learning to get on with uh, their neighbours and uh, we're all in a great adversity together here. So the nationalists and the uh, bring back Sharia or, or re introduce Sharia law onto, uh, into this country people have got no support here whatsoever. All of them come from outside the area. So yeah, we should tell both sets to go back where they come from, wherever that may be. We've got problems enough here. We've got the rich and the super rich moving into Whitechapel and Allgate and they're displacing us and it's getting more difficult for us to survive. In our borough, the East End, the most famous working class area of London is now being taken over by the rich. But what are these Sharia law nuts got to say about it? What are these so-called nationalists got to say about it? Absolutely nothing as always and even ironically for the nationalists the nazis or whatever you want to call them they're busy haranguing the touts outside the uh, outside the curry houses but they've got nothing to say about the ultra rich from abroad coming in and buying up and swanning around the streets like in Lehman Street, for example, nothing to say about that at all. Reason? Because they've got a deference gene. And if someone is a multimillionaire, they might be black or yellow or brown, but the fact that they're a multimillionaire, the fact that they're well-educated, the fact that they've got high-paid jobs in the city makes them automatically superior in their, to the brains of the nationalists who have an inferiority complex, which can be seen from their whining election broadcasts, and they prostrate themselves. These right wingers, these people proud to be British and so on, proud to be nationalists with their British identity, as soon as some grubby shake comes along, they're the first people to rush to open the door in the hope of a tip. That's, the, that's their mentality deferential and groveling before the rich of all nations and all colours and hatred towards people either black or brown but white as well because they consider us white people that still remain in the East End as inferior scum that were unable to get out. So now they might be pleased because we most of us may have to leave along with a brown and the black people because soon we might not be able to afford to live here and what a great triumph for British nationalism so anyway I'll be back after the Euro elections and the results are not in until Sunday even though the council ones will be announced on Friday where we can expect some gains for UKIP even on the council even though they haven't got any policies whatsoever um, and so I'll be back to comment upon that. And we've got the Scottish referendum to uh, chew over over the next few months. 
before we come to the general election. So I will continue to cover elections because even though I'm an anarchist, I still believe it's very, inter uh, very interesting and also quite relevant to our situation. So until next week, and when we got the results in, I say goodbye.